What we turn to art for is precisely this moment when we know something, we feel it, but can't articulate it because it's too complex and multiple. But the knowing at such moments, though happening without language, is real. I'd say this is what art is for, to remind us that this other sort of knowing is not only real, it's superior to our usual, conceptual, reductive way. Hey everybody, thank you for watching Leaf by Leaf. Today, I am thrilled to be talking about A Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Saunders. This title is an allusion to a deceptively complex moment in Chekhov's story called Gooseberries. Overall, this is an amazing book about writing. It's also about reading and just the craft of writing and art in general. But before I get started on the book, I just want to give a little bit of context and perspective uh, so you know where I'm coming from and can situate why I love this book so much. Uh, I've been a lifelong reader, and starting in my teenage years, it was Michael Crichton who actually got me really interested in the notion of pursuing my own creative writing. And so for over 15 years, uh, I submitted poems and short stories and uh, a, a few novels, and I've, of course, uh, amassed a mountain of rejection slips. But that's, you know, it's not at all discouraging, and those years haven't been wasted. You know, I, I've submitted stuff as recently as two years ago, and I still do have a novel in progress that I've been working on for over a year, and perhaps it will see the light of day. I, I seem to have found a good style and, and voice uh, for this one. Uh, it's unlike anything I've ever written. But along the way, and here recently, I'd say within the last five years, I've realized that at heart, I am a reader above all. As it so happens, this would essentially be validated a few years ago when the first book review I ever sent in uh, for possible publication not only got published in print, but it also uh, won as part of uh, the national book review competition that Grove Atlantic put on for the mystery dot doc. So th those things sort of uh, really validated my suspicion that maybe I'm not a, a creative writer, um, but just a reader and an appreciator, uh, a patron of the arts, if you will. But during that time, I really took writing seriously and I really studied the craft and read a lot of books on writing, many of them over and over again. Some of them are just so inspiring that they just made me want to go and lock myself in a closet and write uh, for days on end. And indeed, just like with anything, if you practice it and go after performing it yourself, it gives you so much more of an appreciation for the craft. Um, so just like, let's say, uh, chess, if you've never played chess in your life, you can still appreciate watching two chess masters battle it out, even though you don't exactly know what's going on. However, if you take the time to start playing it yourself and learn the different moves, you know, the Sicilian, the Queen's Gambit, which has been made very popular recently, uh, then you step back and watch two masters who are way above your level uh, go at it. You have this completely new appreciation. You start to see not only how they're using, uh, you know, pre-designed devices and how they're using them so cleverly, but then you also see when they sort of bend the rules and they do the unexpected, and you have so much more of an appreciation. And it's the same uh, with reading and writing. So over the years, I have read, of course, the classic E.B. White, William Strunk, Elements of Style, E.M. Forster's the Aspects of the Novel, John Gardner's The Art of Fiction, How Fiction Works by James Wood, Stephen King's On Writing, which is actually one of those books that was really inspiring and I read over and over. The first part of it is more of a biography and more of a memoir, but then it's all about craft uh, and is done in such a practical and uh, accessible way. It can, it can go, he, King really transcends his own genre. Uh, in, in this book. Betsy Lerner's The Forest for the Trees, Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird, 
The Writing Life by Annie Dillard, who is one of my favorite writers. And this one boasts the one line piece of advice that you can put on an index card and keep it above your writing desk. And it says, write as if you were dying. Zen and the Art of Writing, Ray Bradbury, which has really creative ideas. Draft number four by John McPhee. Natalie Goldberg's Writing Down the Bones. This is a great little book. How to Write a Sentence by America's School Teacher, Stanley Fish. Umberto Echo's How to Write a Thesis. I got this when I was in grad school. Vanita Hampton writes The Art of Spiritual Writing. Henry Miller on Writing, which is a compilation of extracts from his work, uh, everything that had to do with the art of writing, of which there is a bounty. Francine Prose, Reading Like a Writer, which also turns it around and says, and it's also uh, you know, advice for those who want to write books as well. Steering the Craft by Ursula K. Le Guin. And most recently, before the George Saunders book, is this uh, Consider This by Chuck Polinick, which was sent to me to review uh, last year by Rain Taxi, and it's in a, a print issue from last year. And now we have George Saunders, A Swim in a Pond in the Rain. And its, uh, it's subtitle is In Which Four Russians Give Us a Master Class on Writing, Reading, and Life. Uh, now, when it comes to George Saunders, I have only read his 10th of December short stories. I haven't read anything else of his. And when I first saw this book starting to make its way around uh, the marketing circuit, I actually thought it was a new novel. Uh, and I sort of mentally put it aside and, and put it off. Nothing against George Saunders. It just, I'm not interested uh, in that right now. Uh, but then I was actually talking with Michael Silverblatt, uh, who was then preparing for his two-part show on Bookworm with George Saunders about this book. And uh, Silverblatt said, no, no, that's actually a nonfiction book, and it's wonderful. I'm reading it right now. And so then when I realized what it is, I ordered it and started reading it immediately. So what George Saunders uh, has done with this book, it's I'm so thankful to have this book. Saunders has been teaching a class at Syracuse University for 20 years, on the Russian short story in translation. And he has taken these seven short stories from Chekhov, uh, Turgenev, Gogol, and Tolstoy, and he has uh, formed a, a class, a course around it, for a very select group of writing students in the MFA program. He says uh, early in the book that they get hundreds and hundreds of applicants, but they only take something like eight uh, every year. So you're getting 20 years worth of teaching in this book. That alone uh, is very, very uh, attractive to me uh, and, and, and becomes an, an essential part of your library. He starts off with Chekhov's In the Cart, and the way that he first opens it up is we read the story one page at a time, and then we get Saunders', Saunders uh input and his tutelage. And it actually works really well. Now, the other six stories, he has the whole uh, short story there at the very beginning. So you read it and you have it loaded in your mind before the lesson on it. Uh, and they're all, you don't do them one page at a time, though you could if you wanted to. Uh, most of the stories are about 10 pages or so. A couple of them are 25 pages. The longest one clocks in at 50 pages, and it is Tolstoy's Master and Man, which I had never read it before, and it is magisterial. It is a wonderful, wonderful short story. In fact, when I read it, I couldn't even move on to the Saunders lesson first. I needed to take some time uh, to really grapple with what just hit me. So you get so many things at once in this book. Number one, you get to read these seven incredible short stories from Russian masters. Number two, you get to glean all of this writing advice from George Saunders and from 20 years of teaching in the Syracuse MFA program. The third thing you get is you actually glean a lot of advice about being a better reader. And then four, especially with the way that Saunders closes it, you get some really good provocations for thought about art and about this reading and writing life. So here are just some excerpts that are thoughts on the short story form and art in general. It is saying that the highest aspiration of art is to move the audience, and that if that audience is moved, technical deficiencies are immediately forgiven. The short story 
It is not a documentary or rigorous accounting of the passage of time or a fair-minded attempt to show life as it really is lived. It's a radically shaped, even somewhat cartoonish, when held up against the tedious real world, little machine that thrills us with the extremity of its decisiveness. That's all a story is, really, a continual system of escalation. A story means, at the highest level, not by what it concludes, but by how it proceeds. There's a discussion about why these Russian masters, these Russian short stories, are so great to begin with. For a young writer, reading the Russian stories of this period is akin to a young composer studying Bach. All of the bedrock principles of the form are on display. Like I said, the book really teaches you how to read better. Criticism is not some inscrutable, mysterious process. It's just a matter of one, noticing ourselves responding to a work of art moment by moment, and two, getting better at articulating that response. And that is the tact that Saunders takes in here um, that other books I've read on writing and reading lack is he tries to draw attention to what's happening in our minds as a reader as we're reading and then use those to extract rules for writing. It's really wonderful. Writing advice. Chekhov's challenge is to use these expectations he's created, but not too neatly. So Saunders talks a lot about evoking or provoking uh, expectations uh, and then using them creatively, but not too neatly. It's a delicate balance. If you know where a story is going, don't hoard it. Make the story go there now. But then what? What will you do next? You've surrendered your big reveal. Exactly. Often, in our doubt that we have a real story to tell, we hold something back, fearing that we don't have anything else. And this is the difference between mere trickery and a big, serious work of art. This is great advice, and I've run into this all the time. Uh, I've rushed, and I, I give my big reveal, and then I, I'm nervous about that because I feel like that's really all I have. Over and over, the writing advice in here and the way in which uh, Saunders uses example after example, really uh, goes a long way to uh, not only bolster and, and make more robust his uh, propositions that you can derive out of it for like writing rules, uh, but also encourages you uh, to get to work. You don't need an idea to start a story. You just need a sentence. A fact draws us in. The difference between a great writer and a good one or a good one and a bad one, is in the quality of the instantaneous decisions she makes as she works. We can reduce all of writing to this. We read a line, have a reaction to it, trust or accept that reaction, and do something in response, instantaneously, by intuition. In a story, attribute must meet adversity. That means as soon as you've given a character or someone uh, an attribute, you have to somehow uh, challenge that attribute through adversity. That's what makes a story and makes characters great. The salient questions that Saunders puts before us and that he attempts to help us address over and over are simply two of them. One, what makes a reader keep reading? And two, how do we know a story is good? And I'll be honest, a couple of these uh, Russian short stories I read and I thought to myself, eh, that wasn't that great. But Saunders is obviously a very gifted teacher uh, and also an incisive reader that he took some of these stories, Gooseberries uh, in particular, he takes and he makes so complex. Well, also Tolstoy's Alyosha the Pot. He also takes this very short, like five page story that apparently Tolstoy wrote in a single day and didn't care for and just kind of tossed it aside. And Saunders makes them so complex and brings them to life. I mean, honestly, he breathes so much life into these stories. It's really, really exciting. And his commentary on every one of the stories included, whether you're trying to be a better reader or trying to be a better writer, uh, will just make you excited about reading the Russian masters during the, the golden era of Russian literature. He ends with these great thoughts on the function of literature. What's the point of reading and writing? He says, these days it's easy to feel that we've fallen out of connection with one another and with the earth and with reason and with love. 
I mean, we have, but to read, to write, is to say that we still believe in at least the possibility of connection. Lots of people ask me, how can I be a better reader? How can I be a deeper reader, a more attentive reader? Uh, and I've given them little tips that I've <laughs> gleaned here and there, um, and I've given them other books, but now I'm happy to say that when people ask this question, I can point to A Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Saunders. It's a real, real treat for readers and writers alike.